It's a carrot some price for Wednesday, March 6th, 2024. Coming to you from the Go Goat Sports Studio built by Arbor Lee here at the Iconic Wall Center. And if you're heading out to a game, an activity downtown, why not make it a staycation? Call the wall 604 331 1000. Ask for the Sakaris and Price rates on blackout dates. They apply. Matt Sakaris alongside Blake Price, Grace Sass, hitting switches, conducting things. Big show coming up, all brought to you by Applewood Auto Group. Over at Applewood Infinity in Langley, the fabulous QX80. That fits my life. It really does. The 2024s, you can finance from 0%, plus you get $8,000 in non-stack cash. Go look it up. Applewood Infinity in Langley. It's all good at Applewood. Tim Horton's poll question today, and welcome aboard to Tim Horton's. Blake, do it with me. Roll up the rim to win here for Tim's 60th anniversary. You can play on the Tim's app to win prizes, cash, daily cash jackpot, $10,000. You can win the all-electric Volkswagen ID4, SunSoak Hilton Getaway. Download the Tim's app, roll up the rim to win until March 31st, asking you, are you okay if the Canucks stand pat at NHL trade deadline? Yes or no, you can vote at YouTube and Twitter. And we're asking this, Blake, because you had noticed, we had both noticed, even going back to the Elias Lindholm trade, and some of them may have some dunking am- ammunition there that the Canucks were going so well. Why mess with team chemistry now? They're not going as well now, but we have still sensed a uh, a desire amongst Canucks fans to don't give up any more big assets. Let this team breathe. Let's go in with this group. The, uh, the poll question has taken on a different tenor now than when we first constructed it. Now, I almost view this poll question through the prism of how can you stand Pat, right? Like, I, I think the motive, I think there was as late as last night for the two of us anyway, we sort of sensed among some Canucks fans, nobody wanted to part with Lekromacki. No one wanted to part with Lee Lander. Nobody wanted to part with Oglander. Now, or even the 2025 first round. Right. Pick. Now, when you see the action of today, trade deadline, uh, they moved up 48 hours Hey, how do you not react to this if you're the Canucks? So I voted no on the poll question. The team has performed too well through three quarters of the season. The opportunity is too great here. And then, as you say, there is an element of keeping up with the Joneses. I think you have to, at the very least, I think you have to add another winger. Mm -hmm. You you look at who Pedersen is playing with on a nightly basis. It's not good enough. At the very least, provide another option, even if it's not at the Jake Gensel. Uh, level and, and I still think a, a right shot defenseman, if you can get one affordably or get a guy with term, makes some sense too. And of course, why with term? Myers, a free agent, Zadorov, a free agent, Ian Cole, a free agent. So you're going to be on the market for a defenseman and a right shot defenseman this summer, anyways. If you can get that business done here, then that makes some sense to me as well. Okay, let's get to our top story. Brought to you by Mr. Lube, Elias Lindholm. We barely know you. And now may be on his way out the door. And Rick Dollywall reporting, and this is important, it is the Canucks who have initiated conversation on this proposed three-way deal that broke yesterday via uh, Tuesday via Chris Johnston of Lindholm going to Boston where the Bruins are in the market for not one, but two centermen that Boston would send Pittsburgh a cache of assets and that Pittsburgh would send the Canucks Jake Gensel. We don't know whether the Canucks would have to provide anything further. I guess that's part of the negotiation here. I'm all for that. Provided you're not giving up too much more. You've already given up Kuzmenko, Bristevich, a first round pick and a fourth that can become a third. That's a fair bet. You did so on January 31st. We're six weeks later now, Blake. So the price should come down on a player if you're missing him for six weeks of service or, you know, what, uh, 15 or so games. So uh, I'm okay with this. And Jim Rutherford has a big history of moving on quickly from a player if it doesn't work out. I will give you two examples. Both of them Vancouver Canucks or ex-Vancouver Canucks. Acquired Tanner Pearson. On November 14th, 2018, 
had moved him out by February 25th of the next year, barely four months. Eric Goodbranson, again, with the Vancouver Canucks. Acquired February 25th, 2019, ironically for Tanner Pearson. Moved out eight months later to the day in October of 2019. Yeah. I, David I, Perron, too. I, I think the uh, the Canucks are, uh, are going to have to be careful, though, about getting rid of too many bodies here. Um, if it's just Lindholm out and Gensel in, okay. But the Canucks can't afford to lose Lindholm and lose Hoaglander. All, oh God! All no, in the, God no! No! All no, in no, the name no, no, of no, Jake no, Gensel. No, 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 no. Like I wouldn't even want to. I wouldn't want to even attach an extra third round pick. Given how everybody else is moving right now, I think right. the Vancouver Canucks would do their best to Let try. To, Boston pay the freight on this. They're the ones looking for centermen. There's not centermen out there. Or do you just say screw it with the Bruins part Very of the few. deal and add Gensel with the good old fashioned price tag and just load up. Okay, but how are you getting him without Lind- Lindholm going to Boston? Well, you're, you're Pittsburgh doesn't want Lindholm. No, no, you're you're finding so, another way. You're finding another way. Our top star is brought to you by Mr. Lou, 100% Canadian owned. Started in Edmonton by father and son team. Maybe we'll leave Edmonton out of it right now, given what's happening. <laughs> They're the pioneer of the no appointment oil change and now new tire service and sales with no appointments. 16 locations in the lower mainland for one near you. Go to MrLube.com. And as you've mentioned, Blake, the stakes have now gone up with the West loading up. Anthony Mantha from Washington to Vegas on Tuesday at the cost of a second and a fourth round pick 50% retained on that deal here on Wednesday, the Colorado avalanche have added defenseman, Sean Walker from the Philadelphia flyers, centerman, Casey Middlestad from the Buffalo Sabres, Bowen Byram, Cranbrooks, Bowen Byram, mm-hmm. former Vancouver giant heading to Buffalo in that deal. Port Moody's Ryan Johansson heading to Philadelphia In the Walker deal, although he's been waived, the Edmonton Oilers have strengthened down the middle, getting two Anaheim Ducks centermen and Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick. And then there's the LA Kings, who have a couple of players on waivers today, and Jared Anderson Dolan and Jacob Jacob Muvrari, the defenseman. Two guys who at one point were looked like good young players who might be, you know, fringe uh, support players for their club. So you wonder whether they're making those moves to accommodate a player coming in uh, so far the storyline on trade deadline with all due respect to the Florida Panthers adding um, Vladimir Tarasenko but so far the storyline on trade deadline has been this Western arms race that we have predict been predicting for some time Blake that there would be amongst Vegas Edmonton Colorado Dallas of course who has already added Chris Tanev that there would be a beefing up prior to the trade deadline, and it's playing out exactly as we thought. Well, the other problem here is that the other teams are making deals that aren't costing them a whole lot. Like There's some pretty, at worst, fair deals being made here. That's a terrific price for Vegas to get, Mantha. That's another behemoth in their lineup for a second and a fourth. The fourth in 2026, yeah. and Washington retained no brokerage here. So you, you deal with that fourth down the road. It's a second-round pick. He's a flawed player. There's a reason why he's available and the reason why he's never really fully launched in the NHL the way that many thought that he would. But you know, to have 20 goals under your belt already in more sheltered, limited minutes, I mean, that's that's a that's a useful player. For uh, sure. I, I think ultimately the one-for-one one deal, Byram for – uh, for Middlestat makes a lot of sense for a team that moves the puck already from the back as well as the as the Avs do. Um, Byram had fallen out of favor there a little bit. So had Johansson. It does cost them a first round pick in 2025. So it's not like Colorado has gotten off scot free. But you have to say they're an impl- improved hockey club with Middlestat instead of Johnson and Walker instead of Byram. Right? And then the Edmonton Oilers with the Henrique price again. It's not ridiculous johansson not johnson um so what's the, the what's what is it a first for enrique and middle uh for enrique and carrick uh i thought i saw a first in which case i didn't it was that. a first i believe yeah. yeah yeah see that's a that's that's more than i would have paid on that trade you get some depth though uh and they are i mean edmonton's in a different stage than than the canucks are edmonton is desperate to make the stanley cup final final that's the big difference you you think the canucks are pushing chips into the middle my goodness 
the Oilers are pushing chips and the table itself inside. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it's they just have to. So they they got to pull out all the stops. We actually have the full trade uh, details now from Frank and to Edmonton. It's Adam Henrique, seventy five percent retained. Sam Carrick in a seventh to Anaheim. Edmonton twenty twenty fourth first a conditional fifth and then the bolts get a uh, a fourth rounder and the condition in routine yeah yeah fifth becomes a fourth if edmonton wins the cup tampa also also must send a reserve list player which ah, is interesting so, so uh, an unsigned yeah um and i see uh mark specter uh reporting too that just as background carrick is number one in ducks penalty killing henrique is number two Right. So not only do they do they improve at five on five, they just completely revamp their PK unit. So Edmonton spends a first, a fourth for the brokerage, and a conditional fifth that can be a fourth for Enrique and Carrick. Yeah. Um, and should mention that Flyers twenty twenty five pick that they got from Colorado for, um, for Walker in the Johansson deal is also conditional. It's top 10 protected, so it would slide to 2026. If somehow, some way, the Colorado Avalanche found uh, wound up with the top 10 pick. Our trade deadline show just got a lot more difficult. Our trade deadline week got a lot more difficult in the era of retained salary and <laughs> conditional picks. Like, there's always been conditional picks, but right. my goodness, are the brackets, well, the bracket buttons are going to be uh, well punched right. this season. Yeah, there'll be a lot of those asterisks on uh, yeah. cap friendly, but hey, that that's... That's the normal course of business now. Yeah. For Conditional sure. picks and retained salary as we go through this final year of effectively a flat cap era. That is par for the course with business. Now, tell me this, Blake Price. Uh, Captain Canuck on, on YouTube pointed out Tarasenko was an absolute steal. Yeah, I agree. Add, add that to the reasonable, you know, two middling the two picks. wingers, Mar- uh, Tarasenko and Mantha, I think, went for very – yeah good prices from the standpoint of the buyer yeah um colorado has given up something significant here of course they've gotten something significant back i mean middle stats an rfa he's got two more years of club control bones byron's got four more years of club control so that's sort of a different animal than the mantha tarasenko rental prices frank i think that's a little much from what uh edmonton gave up Branheim, like Adam Henry can masquerade as a second line center, but for me, he's more a, a third line guy and the scarcity of center iceman. But getting back to Lindholm here, Blake, we heard it on Zadorov as well. When is the last time that you heard of a team make two in season acquisitions and then there being smoke about moving the player on? I mean, this is really irregular stuff. And particularly 15 games, 16 games into his NHL tenure to be looking at, uh, or into his Canucks tenure, Mm -hmm. uh, to be looking at Elias Lindholm as a a guy who potentially, you know, moves on to land a second uh, Lindholm at center, Gensel at wing. Those were always the two big deadline pieces, right? Be an extraordinary turn of events. If something like that goes down and gasoline on the fire with pod Colson's demotion to Abbotsford, um, which Jim Rutherford told Patrick Johnson is just paperwork, uh, by the way. Uh, but it's still all the insiders suggesting that this deal is still possible as soon as today. Um, and it is an extraordinary piece of work. Uh, I, I don't know why it hasn't worked famously for. Well, Elias I think it's Lindholm. the wing thing, you know, talk it said he's the centerman. But he's played center here. Yeah. And even in those games, did not seem to have it. No. Um, you know. Well, I think it's also become clear that he needs to play with good players. But he's played, no, he played several he's played games with, with Pedersen. I know. Like, I know. I know. I know. Uh, you wonder if he just kind of screwed up the power play as we talked about a little bit because, you know, the, you had to. Uh, well, I, let, let me say this. Make and, and after, move people around. Man, after watching that power play, and it was a power play effectively because yep. the extra man was out there in the overtime. Can, and I don't know, Grady, you can drop Matt off if you want. I just want to have a one-on-one conversation with Rick Tockett right here. Rick, can you go back, please? Just don't, don't be too offended, you know. <laughs> Rick, please, please, JT Miller. At the top of the circle. How many times do I have to plead with you? Please, a full reset. I-, I think you restore the lines back to the way they were, assuming no trade today. Go back to Besser, Miller, and Suter. Go back 
to Petey with Lindholm, assuming he's still a Vancouver Canuck, and whomever on that on the other side. Stop with the three lines, reunite Bluger with Garland, and again whomever alongside the the, the change of Mikheyev and and who else and Hoaglander. Just go back. Go back to where you were in January, early January. Just go back. Stop it with the the blender. I'm done. All right, Coach Talk at Sakaris. What's your rebuttal? Okay, okay, can I speak now? You hear, did you see what just happened here, Grady? He cleared the room. I, I, I just needed to talk Matt to Rick. Grady, I'm going to need the room for a second. I, I, I didn't just need to talk Rick to here. Rick. One-on-one, yeah. mano on mano yeah. Corner table. <sighs> I, I, as you know, Grady, I would... Love to debate him on this. Uh, frankly, I can't find a lot of material there because uh, I, for the most part, agree wholeheartedly. Well, what fun is that? I know. Do you want me to fake it just for the sake of the fight? <laughs> You've done We've it done before. that before. <laughs> the we old used to do old and price segment. debate. We used from to the do summer. a whole segment, yes. S versus B. Yeah. What do we call it on Thursdays? Take five Thursdays? There's that too. Yeah. Uh, First of all, uh, speaking of clearing the room, hey, you filled up our room on Twitter. So big shout out to the Twitter audience that's joining us right now. Live every day, 1130 a.m. Pacific time. Secure some price on your preferred platform, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Insta. Okay. Does the Pope Colson thing tell you that something is near? I mean, I'll, I'll take Jim Rutherford at his words that it had to do with setting a roster. Although it's a little early, uh, I think they have to set their Calder Cup rosters by the end of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, we should note that Abby is in Ontario, Ontario, California, right. so it's easy peasy for him to swing on over there. Interest, um, you know, the Phil Kessel thing is going to be interesting over the next forty-eight hours. They have to have Kessel signed on Friday for him to be eligible for the Stanley Cup playoffs. It, it, you know, as it stands right now, doesn't look like it's tracking that way. Now, on to the hockey game. A 2-1 overtime win in Los Angeles against the Kings, avenging the 5-1 defeat here at Rogers Arena on Thursday. Your goal scorers here are your two studs, Patterson with the late one to tie and Miller to win it in the overtime session. But your biggest star is Thatcher Demko based on the lights out save he made on Alex Turcott that two on one. Let's hear from coach Tockett talking about the importance of one of the saves of the year from Demko and in the NHL. Unreal save. I mean, we, we, that's a ten dollar. I mean, that's a, that's a highlight one that'll be on. It'll be on tonight and probably all month. That's that's big time save for us at, at the crucial time. Yeah, you're damn right. And, and what I want to point out here, the way this game went, because everybody said it had a playoff feel to it when it wasn't just desperately boring. And yeah. good on the home crowd there in Los Angeles for booing as they did at the sight of nothing happening. Defensemen just sitting there on the puck in their own zone and not getting fortunate. Well, Queen Hughes actually looked at, at, at Ronick a couple of times and was like, like what are we what supposed, are we supposed to, do? to And I, I was glad that Shorty uh, shouted out the... Uh, Laviolette Boucher stare off of yes, many years that. ago. When and Tomlinson too saying d- they Dave, should be booing Dave, the Kings. Good on Dave for saying that too. They should be booing at one point. DT said, for, you're in Los Angeles. This is glitz. glitz. Showtime. People, people have other forms of entertainment options. Oh, just in a Los few Angeles. thousand in LA. Yes. And you're going to sit there and play that passive one, three, one. It's funny. Because I had watched the Kings and the Oilers recently, and Jack Michaels and Louis DeBrusque on the Edmonton broadcast were just as harsh. They're saying, like, well, you don't you you don't even want to call it a one three one. You just call it a, like a one four. One guy standing there in the neutral zone uh, near the opposing blue line, and the rest of them just back there ready to clog things up and check. Boy, Give me anything but a Canucks King series in the Stanley Cup playoffs. That was dreadful. Jacques Lemaire is in rural Quebec somewhere, just grinning ear yes. to ear. In a cabana sucre, sitting there eating maple sugar. Yeah. Like, ah, yes. I did this. Well done. Yes. LA Kings. Anyways, dreadful hockey game, but the Canucks win. They can now sweep 
this road trip, we, we, we talked about how, look, Anaheim was a gimme. It's just a terrible hockey team. LA was a vengeance game, a difficult opponent because of where they sit in the Western Conference wildcard race. And now on to Vegas with a chance to sweep the three-game roadie before coming back to start that nine-game homestand against the Winnipeg Jets at Rogers Arena on Saturday. And you may have noticed Blake Price with the point earned from the overtime defeat. The LA Kings have moved into third place yeah, in so the Pacific Vegas Division. has got lots to play for. Vegas as the top wild card. LA has a game in hand, both teams on 73 points. The Kings also have an additional regulation win. So Vegas has got a lot of play for. It's not a tap in. No one would suggest it, especially at home for Vegas. But they're hurt figuratively and literally. Like they they are not playing well right now, the Vegas Golden Knights, and they've got guys on the sidelines. So if ever there was a time to march into Vegas and think, well, we're getting them at a better time, this would be it. And given the Canucks stumbles uh, of a week ago, if they could three games sweep this on the road, huge momentum shift back in the right direction for the Vancouver Canucks, especially going into the homestand now. So absolutely big, huge game. We already knew it was huge. You have to to circle it a, a second and third time, I think, now, because you completely right the wrongs of a week ago, I think, if you if you win this game. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and of course, to get road wins like this in succession after that little shuffle uh, scuffle, I mean, I, I, I would mm-hmm. absolutely think this is. A, and of course, you, you you've got a loss already to the Vegas Golden Knights this year. We're talking about the head to head and the best teams that are uh, mm-hmm. still out there. You're going to play Vegas again two more times after this after this one in Vegas on Tuesday, April second, and then back here at Rogers Arena on Monday, April eighth. Carson Soucy returns to the lineup. They get a win because that's all they do with Carson Soucy in the lineup. The Canucks now 17-3 and 2 with the big defenseman in uniform. Here's head coach Rick Tockett on the ties that bind between Soucy in the lineup and that extraordinary record. Really good. Calm, very common influence back there on the defense. You know, just when he's on the bench. When he's on the ice, he calms things down. When things get hectic, he makes that little subtle play to get the puck or to make a play to somebody. Um, you can tell he's been missing it. We've been missing that from him, and uh, to get him back, you know, it's a, he's a leader too. So it's a it's a big it's a big. I don't know. Somebody said it's like you know, trained for a defenseman. He's also fresh legs. Yes, he, you know, it's a bit of a trade. Say. It's, a, it's a trade deadline acquisition, kind of in and of itself, because he's not battered and bruised from sixty games of work, right? So he's got 22 games to work. Like he is fresh as a daisy. Mm-hmm. So that's really helpful for the Canucks. And especially the defensive side. We knew that Susie and Cole, for the most part, would be more subtle defensemen when they were added. Simple play, correct play, nothing too flashy. That's frankly exactly what the Vancouver Canucks needed mm-hmm. after the tire fires in their own end over the last few years. And the other thing, of course, is that the hughes Rona pairing has slipped some defensively. So to bring a stopper in, that big granite block defenseman at this stage of the game, uh, just what the doctor ordered, particularly as these games get tighter, as space gets tighter, as you see more playoff-style hockey games down the stretch in this final quarter against teams that, needless to say, have uh, more at stake than the Vancouver Canucks when you look at L.A. and Vegas jockeying towards the bottom of the Western Conference playoff line and not the top like the Canucks. I know you said you didn't much fancy Jason Zucker, but Chris Johnson has reported that the Canucks are talking to Arizona about him. Does it now sound like Zucker is plan B if no Gensel and Phil Kessel might be plan C? See, I'd I'd go Gensel, I'd go Toffoli, I'd go Zucker, and then I'd go Kessel. Gotten quiet around to Foley here, yeah. and uh, you'll hear later in the show. It does sound like New Jersey, true to Tom Fitzgerald's claims, and we quoted him yesterday on that. Wants to resign to Foley, that they don't really want to trade to Foley. So it sounds like you're either going to have to meet Fitzgerald's price here on to Foley, or he's going to be happy to keep him through the deadline as a rental, see if he can get him re-signed. And of course they're holding out a flicker of hope 
that they can get back in the playoff race under interim head coach Travis Green. Although Greener lost his debut as the head mm-hmm. coach of I, the uh, New Jersey Devils, they fall 5 3 to Florida. I'm not surprised that Toffoli has cooled for the very moment that we're talking here. But, you know, teams negotiate for 24 hours with a, uh, a player and his agent and all of a sudden realize, God, we are far away here. This guy wants a lot of money and we're not going to be able to do it. So, yeah, we are going to either consummate that trade or pursue that trade that we were thinking about originally. So I uh, I think it's a stay right now for Toffoli, but I don't think we've heard the last of that name. Join us at Park Casino, the official casino resort of the Vancouver Canucks. A week from today, Wednesday, March 13th, we'll be at BC Kitchen from 6 to 7 p.m. doing a live Sakaris and Price show. we got prizes to give away. This is all in advance of the game against the Colorado Avalanche. You get 15% off the game day menu with your game ticket at BC Kitchen. Sign up for the Encore Rewards. You get $10 of free play to use in the Canucks Gaming Corner. Park is just steps away from Rogers Arena, so come on by, say hello, maybe win a prize, and then make your way to the rink or just stick around, watch the game, and... Of course, there are entertainment options at Park as well. Oh, and you know what? People are always, oh, we should fly down to Vegas and watch the Canucks play the Golden Knights. If you haven't been to Park, it's absolutely gorgeous. And it, it's it's like that experience. You get that sort of glitzy, glamorous experience before yep. you go to the game. It's fabulous. Yeah, and there's a good vibe in there Yeah, in advance of Canucks, game with, Canucks games with the uh, property, property being so close That's right. to Rogers Arena and the Entertainment Stadium District. Okay, let's get to... Uh, Let's get to today's menu, and it's brought to you by our friends at Greta. And, uh, oh, so quick story here. Mm -hmm. We had a free afternoon in Seattle a number of years ago as we were awaiting uh, the Blue Jays and Mariners game. And we went to one of these arcades because there was a debate about who would kick whom's ass in Mario Kart. Between whom and whom? I was not part of this. This is my better half and Oh, I. okay. I thought we were playing old school Nintendo Mario Kart, but we were playing the new fancy Mario Kart. She swept me. I didn't win a single one. Mm, they've got it at Greta. They do. And dive into the ultimate Mario Day celebration. A thrilling tournament coming on. May 10th, you get ready to put your gaming skills to the test here. Single elimination showdown, chance to win $1,000 cash. I don't like my chances against you, Grady, or anyone. I will be an easy mark in this tournament. Mario Kart's not my specialty either, actually. No. Mm -hmm. So whether you're a seasoned Mario expert, just up for a good challenge. Event is perfect for you. Tickets online for $20 or $25 at the door. You can enjoy special $5.50 Regretta pricing on drinks all day long to add to that experience. Tickets include a house beer, Regretta burger, and entry into the tournament with game card. This tournament starts at 4 p.m. sharp. That's Greta, 50 West Cordova on March 10th, a Mario Day celebration my driving game was super sprint look it up folks that's that's how old i am what about f-zero no nope. don't know it. spaceship f-zero no nope. don't know it Do you even know what need for speed or gran turismo is i know, uh, I know gran heard turismo. of them, I know gran them. Turismo, but super sprint but that's it let's Spin see the, the wheel. dirt bike game uh uh super bike oh, yeah. excite bike excite, excite bike yeah oh. excite bike anyways yeah greta's a hell we of digress a yeah greta's, <laughs> greta's a hell of a time uh, Darren Dreger is going to join us from TSN. Of course, TSN Hockey Insider. It's been a while since we caught up with Dregs, but, you know, tis the week mm-hmm. to be doing that sort of thing. We'll get to some hashtags, the best and worst of Twitter.com. Kevin Bieksa joining the broadcast last night from Anaheim, where he now lives, former Vancouver Canuck, and, of course, Hockey Night in Canada panelist features there we also have a solution to the new canadian men's national team coach we sure do yeah we sure do we have it all plotted out now all we need is the cooperation of citizenship and immigration and uh a foreign nation well citizenship and immigration the canadian soccer association 
and the government of Spain. Stay if tuned. all those three three bodies just listen to us, we could do this. We're gonna have a hell of a 2026 yeah. World Cup here. Yeah. In Vancouver, Frank Corrado stops by and says they absolutely now must trade Elias Lindholm, given the genie is out of the bottle and that they've been talking about him with other teams. And uh, we'll check in on the Seahawks, where it was a big day of cuts yesterday, including two players who have multiple Pro Bowl selections at the same position, both gone. We'll explain later. Park is the official casino resort of the Vancouver Canucks, and Secures and Price, we're heading there. Yeah, March 13th. Join us for a live show at BC Kitchen in advance of the game against Colorado. You get 15% off the game day menu at BC Kitchen with a game ticket, $6 happy hour specials at Center Bar Park, just steps away from Rogers Arena. We'll see you on March 13th. In a season like this, you never want to miss a single second of what's happening on the ice. And you want to be around your fellow fans, right? Well, Greta Bar YVR at 50 West Cordova, the perfect spot to do so. Hey, if you've got tickets, a great place to pre and post. They've got drink specials every single day. And if you don't have tickets, well, stick around and soak up the atmosphere with all your fellow fans, play all the great video games and air hockey, great air hockey set up as well at Greta Bar YVR. We'll see you there, 50 West Cordova. Great Clips is the official hair salon of the National Hockey League. There are 37 salons in Vancouver and the Lower Mainland, all Canadian-owned and operated. Download the app and find the nearest to you. When you're up next for a cut, you'll get a ready next text. Great Clips. It's going to be great. Well, tis the season, so we thought we'd check in with our old friend from TSN, Mr. Darren Greger. How you doing? You keeping Ray yeah. in line this year on the pod? I'm, yeah, I'm trying my best. Um no, Ray has done a good job of of just keeping nice and mellow. Like mellow Ray is is a real good Ray. So mellow. Ray and Greg's has has, uh, has had a lot of that uh, throughout the course of, of season five. You know, I'm looking forward to the trade deadline on Friday because um, I've gone through a stretch here, guys. Like we all get the flu and colds and and all of that. I got buckled last week. I unfortunately had to go out west. Spent a bit of time in Manitoba. A family friend pa- passed away, oh. and I came back. My both my wife and I came back from that trip, and just got hit by a ton of bricks. So, uh, as we're having this conversation here on Wednesday, I'm actually feeling like I'm about eighty oh, percent, which is is good with the deadline looming. Monday, eh, I was looking sketchy for Friday's trade deadline, but. I think we'll be able to bounce. And be well, you got 48 hours to get well yeah. and yeah. be a part of uh, James Duffy and his traveling circus. We look forward <laughs> to it every year. Uh, Dregs, as we sit here and chat, Mantha 50% retained for a second and a fourth. Tarasenko yeah. 50% retained for a third and fourth. Boy, it looks like a buyer's market is shaping up here a little bit. It does. Yeah, and and, and then you know you look at some of the deals we've already seen prior to these deals where you bring in a third party team as a a broker. So it just goes to show you how creative managers can be, but how creative they have to be in a real tight salary cap environment where obviously, you know, the Florida Panthers acquiring Vladimir Tarasenko here are looking for more scoring punch. It seems like they've got an abundance of that with the season that Reinhardt has had and the depth they have with Barkov and Kachuk. And I mean, go down the list, right? Carter Verhage is terrific. So to add another line of offense with Vladimir Tarasenko, who's going to feel right at home. My understanding is his wife and his family live in sunrise. So this is, uh, this is like leaving Ottawa going home for Tarasenko and Ottawa gets, you know, two decent draft picks. They primarily get the third, um, but they also get a, a, a conditional fourth, which could turn into a third if the, the Florida Panthers go as deep again as they did last year. And given the quality of the Florida Panthers and how well they played this season, I don't know if there's a safer bet in the Eastern Conference to go deep into the playoffs than the Florida Panthers. So this makes yeah. them better. Uh, the juicy part here in Vancouver is Elias Lindholm and whether after just 15 games, the Vancouver Canucks are willing yeah. to move on, don't no longer see him as a fit. What do you know? What do you think the chances are that Lindholm goes out and that Jake Gansel comes in to Vancouver? Yeah. Well, look, that was the speculation on Tuesday, right? And it was salacious. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that we in the media just feed off of, right? Just the idea of a 
coveted piece in Jake Gensel of the Pittsburgh Penguins being involved in a three-way trade uh, with the Boston Bruins and the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, come on, we could chew on that for days. Um, do I know that there were conversations? Yes, I do. How do you make a complicated dynamic like that work? We could see how Jake Gensel would fit into the plans of Rick Tockett and the Vancouver Canucks. We certainly could see why the Boston Bruins would want to try and make a hockey trade to acquire Lindholm because the reality in Boston is they don't need one center. They need at least two centers there. You know, otherwise you wonder whether or not, you know, the season goes up in smoke for the Boston Bruins. So the pieces did kind of align. But then you have to wonder, okay, what does Pittsburgh get out of this? Where are they getting a first-round draft pick from? You know, there was speculation. Could it be Jake DeBrusque? Is it Pod Colson? Is it Hoaglander? Like, go down the list of all the, the, the pieces that could be in play. I think, you know, th there's some substance to all of that. So I'm not saying that that maybe we jumped the gun here a little bit collectively in media. There definitely was a connection. And furthermore to that, in following up on it, I heard that the New York Rangers may be poking around the Vancouver Canucks on Lindholm, you know, because they like the idea of, of adding a centerpiece as well. But I've also heard a little bit of the flip side, which involves both Vancouver and Vegas and saying that, okay, of course they have interest in Jake Gensel. I mean, why wouldn't you? You're talking about a defending Stanley Cup champion, and you're talking about one of the top contending teams for the Stanley Cup in Vancouver. But is it more of the Pittsburgh Penguins trying to drum up a market as opposed to teams like Vancouver and Vegas being in hot pursuit? And there is a distinct difference there. Both those teams absolutely would love to have Gensel. And you look at the history of Rutherford and Alvin and Jake Gensel and Pittsburgh and all that. Yeah, we can connect the dots. But there's a big difference between one team being in hot pursuit as a buyer and the seller being in, you know, uh, a, a situation where Kyle Dubas is trying to drum up a better market than the one that he actually has. We know Frank Corrado's got opinions on this. Your thoughts on the Canucks now just needing to make this deal because it's out there. Like, is there damage control with Lindholm? Mm, not if he plays better or, you know, you drift by the trade deadline and he settles in and he becomes the piece that they – thought he was going to be when when they made the deal right um and i you guys tell me i mean i've watched my share of canucks games since that trade was made i i wouldn't suggest that he's been bad he just doesn't seem to to be a fit no matter where rick talkett plays him Offer. and now now you're starting to get you know the, the the quarterbacks out there the armchair quarterbacks who are looking at the deal and going Geez, you know, not only is he not quite a fit, but he's starting to look a little slow. I mean, that, that's kind of what we do. And maybe that's what we see. I don't know. But it's, you know, somebody told me a long time ago when I used to watch my son play hockey, you know who it was? It was Craig Natavish. He said, Dregs, I'm going to do you a favor. When you watch your son on the ice, don't watch just your son. Watch the entire line because what you'll notice is everybody makes mistakes. Yes. And so maybe that's what's going on now with Lindholm because of all of the speculation. But do I know that they've engaged in trade conversations with other clubs on Lindholm? Yes. And do I also know the history of Jimmy Rutherford where I don't know that he would categorize this as a mistake, but why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you try and address an area of maybe potential concern? You know, you you swung for the fence, you acquired Lindholm. Okay, he doesn't appear to be the fit you were hoping he would be. We well, still have time to shake things up and make the change so that you're happy and they're happy. I don't see anything wrong with that. The cupboard wasn't He's full. He's got of a reputation for getting off a player totally. when he knows it's oh, not working, oh, 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 oh. which is different than a lot of general yeah. managers out there, Darren who feel that yes. they're invested after they but, make them. But what's the pressure, Darren, of making sure you don't end up with less in your pocket than you started with? Um, like, yeah. it's one thing to make that trade if it's a saw off and you get all your money back, you know, but can you get all your money back if you're if you're Rutherford Novelty? No, probably not. But the saw off comes in, okay, you can't miss twice, right? So if you're moving out Lindholm or you're making another deal, and it's Gensel. If Jake Gensel ends up being a Vancouver Canuck, forget this conversation ever happened because right. he's it the best matter. available player, right? Yeah. He's the best available player, super competitive, terrific hockey smarts. We could go on and on and on. 
if they end up with another player that makes them more competitive, maybe doesn't have the flash and dash of a Jake Gensel, but still makes them deeper and stronger and more competitive, okay, it's still good. Nothing wrong with that. If if nothing happens of substance and they hold on to Lindholm and Lindholm just walks into free agency and never really finds his way with the Vancouver Canucks, then that's more of a challenge. Because part of the reason why Vancouver paid what they paid to the Calgary Flames was because of where we're at right now. They wanted the early look. They wanted to get Lindholm in early to get him established to make sure the fit was there. Well, right now it doesn't look like the fit was there, which is why they're having these other conversations. But maybe they can replace him with somebody else that is uh, is more suited to to play the way the Vancouver Canucks need him to play. Who else are you hearing the Canucks connected to? Oh, it's a good question. Um, I, I still think they're looking at the defense market too, right? I think this is Patrick Galvin and Jimmy Rutherford just – you know, what's the best available player? And okay, if it's if it's Gensel, all right, obviously that's where our focus is is going to be. Beyond the forwards who we've already talked about, <clears throat> and if Gensel doesn't end up in, in Vancouver, I I think it drops off. I really do. You know, the New Jersey Devils at some point here in the near future are going off to declare their intentions with Tyler Toffoli. The Foley would be another good piece, but a team that I know is interested in Tyler Toffoli shared with me this morning, they don't think he's going anywhere. They think that, you know, this is Tom Fitzgerald, just making sure that he's got all bases covered, that he wants to extend Tyler to Foley. We know he's had contract extension talks with Pat Brisson. Uh, We believe that they're haggling over term more than anything else. So now where do you go below that, right? So I I honestly don't have a, a real strong connection with the next forward for the Vancouver Canucks on that list. Because there's a number of players who who we don't even know about yet, right? I mean, you can't just look at the trade bait graphics that every network and every website has and says, okay, well, those are the players in play. Yeah, those are the players in play. But in the next 24, 48 hours, we're going to learn of names that we haven't even speculated on yet. And players are going to be available. Like a Pavel Butchnevich, okay, his name has been out there for an extended period of time. Uh, again, as of this morning, the agent doesn't doesn't think he's being traded. Uh, and, you know, the, the source with the St. Louis Blues doesn't think he's likely going to be traded. But a lot can change between now and the three Eastern deadline on Friday. Matt's pet project has been David Savard. What's the likelihood of him <laughs> shaking free in, uh, in Montreal? Uh, because they do like him. Yeah, they like him a lot. So I, as, as we speak, I'm going to say unlikely. Uh, but because of the buzz around David Savard, uh, I'm I'm at least willing to straddle the fence on this one. And why wouldn't you like him? You know, the pedigree um, still plays the game at a high, high level, oozes character. I mean, there's just so much to like about the, the game. And, you know, David Savard is a defenseman that can play lower in your pairings, or if you need him to, to play in your top four, top three, he's capable of playing that too, Right. But what does that cost? So you're talking about an individual who's valued by the Montreal Canadiens. Guys, the Montreal Canadiens aren't in the business of a never-ending rebuild. No, they're in the business of getting better right now so that they're nipping at the edges or they're locked into an Eastern Conference playoff spot next season. Because otherwise, in a Canadian market, as we all know, guess what happens? The fan base says, enough of this nonsense. So they're going to have to get a crazy return. Uh, John Shannon mentioned to us yesterday he thought Pat Verbeek and Anaheim are ready to go make all sorts of trades and that Frank Fratrano may be uh, one of them. Of course, Verbeek has already swung a, maybe the biggest trade of the season with the uh, Gauthier. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, who's the defenseman? Rysdale. <laughs> yeah. Rysdale, of course. Rysdale, yeah. Um, what do you think on Fratrano here? Uh, skeptical at best. I mean, the information that we continue to get out of, out of Anaheim – and uh, from the player agent is that the preference is to keep him and to extend him. Um, but until that happens, again, you know, you got to wait for that phone call to happen. So I'm not besmirching any information that suggests that that he could be traded. There's a ton of interest in Frankie Petrano. There really, truly is. So maybe they get to a place where Verbeek just says, okay, enough. You know, I've gone back and forth with the player agent here. 
we're not making any progress. I'm not messing around anymore. And he calls the bluff. Um, Adam Henrique is, is likely going to be traded. Uh, I keep seeing and hearing that, you know, the Edmonton Oilers believe that, you know, they're going to zero in on him. So I think that Verbeek is going to be active. I do. But for me, the jury is still very much out on Vitrano because, you know, again, as we've talked about here, it, it, Verbeek and the Anaheim Ducks are like a lot of clubs. Yeah, they're 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 trying to go through a process, but they're not in the business of making other teams better at their own expense. So when you've got good young players like Frankie Vitrano, who are really key to your room, to your bench, to how you play, Greg Cronin's a big fan. Again, it would it would take a ton, but if contract negotiations break down on Vitrano, maybe he does get uh, tossed out there. Are, are the Ducks the most likely to to really have a fire sale and and burn everything to the ground? Is there one team you think is is more likely to do that, or are, are all of them just going to be one or two guys at most? It, it feels like most of them, Blake, are going to be one or two guys. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that's you know maybe because so many of the teams have already made their moves. Like I'm a bit surprised that we haven't seen more from the San Jose Sharks. I mean, they don't have much, you know, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, they don't. You're right. They don't. But, you know, they've got some pieces like, you know, Cockin and the goaltender. I mean, that goalie carousel is just wild that nothing really has moved there. And I guess it's 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 gummed up because of Jacob Markstrom and because of some of the speculation that was earlier around UC Saros and more recently around Linus Allmark of the Boston Bruins. Um, but maybe that shapes into action here in, in the next uh, several hours leading up to Friday. But honestly, beyond that, there's no real fire sales. There really aren't, you know, because some of them have been slower and more methodical. You know, I mean, watching Greg Conroy and the Calgary Flames, man, at a snail's pace that they're operating in has been just, it's been, it's been shocking, to be fair. You know, I mean, Noah Hanovan is playing his best hockey, yet they continue to roll him out there. And we know he's going to be traded because he's not signing an extension in Calgary. So I don't... And then, you know, now yeah. I flip over to the Philadelphia Flyers. Nikki Sealer is going to sign an extension there. So that takes one of their two coveted defensemen in play likely out of the market and leaves Sean Walker, who's probably going to be traded. So lots of, you know, permutations yeah. all over the league, but, you know, no multiplayer teams, I don't think. I was going to say, Dregs, I, I, I think Calgary can qualify as a team that is going to move a piece or two, but may still, that could still yeah. be considered fire sale. Given who's already yeah, who's been already left. traded yeah. out uh, there, so Hannafin for sure. What about Markstrom at this stage? Yeah, well, it, it, look, so much changes with the phone the phone call. Like we know that Tom Fitzgerald and the New Jersey Devils have been consistently on Jacob Markstrom. The belief is Markstrom would be willing to waive to go to the New Jersey Devils. So here's my theory on this. Um, Calgary, I think I can appreciate why if you trade Markstrom, then you might as well move other pieces, not just Noah Hannafin, right? Because it's over. It doesn't matter what you do with the remaining games of the regular season. You're not going to find your way truly back into the playoff mix. And right now it feels like a long shot. And it seems like a dead end if you move Markstrom. I guess my theory would be, though, to play devil's advocate, what if you get to the offseason, now you have Markstrom, Markstrom says, okay, I want out. And here's my list of teams I'm willing to go to. And with my no move clause, it's a team of one. That's the New Jersey Devils. Mm -hmm. So now you've got Tom Fitzgerald, who's coming back um, and saying, okay, well, instead of the package I was willing to give you leading up to March 8th, uh, I'm going to give you 60 cents on the dollar. And here's what you're getting from Markstrom now. And, you know, you can play that tough game. And, there's no guarantee you win it. Maybe Conroy says, well, we own the player's rights. He's under contract. So if he doesn't show up, then we suspend him. All right. Yeah, I guess. But nobody ever wants to get involved in that nastiness. So I'm not closing the door on a Jacob Markstrom trade to the New Jersey Devils until 3.05 Eastern on Friday when we know he's not being traded. And then I think some of the speculation just takes it to a new level as we brace for the offseason. I feel a little sorry for Marky because he, they're no closer to the playoffs than the Flames are. What do you no. make of this? Is the league pissed off, do you think, that there are no playoff races to speak of? I mean, somebody's going to need to win eight in a row that's below the bar. Never mind Nashville, who's above the bar. Somebody's going to need to win eight in a row 
to put them themselves close to the playoff bar in either conference it's 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 yeah. it's unbelievable in the in the age of parody there isn't and much it, of it right it, now and it all just happened like in the last couple of weeks yeah last week yeah it, it does take some of the spice out of it for sure uh and i think that that's also influenced the trade deadline in a big way right you right. know again like it it what was it a week and a half ago we were actually talking about the idea of uc saros being traded by the national predators and then you find out one team told me, well, we called because we had interest in UC Saros, of course. And the response we got back from Barry Crotz was, okay, well, we want one of, if not your best young NHL forward. Um, we want your top prospect and we want a first round draft pick. And that's kind of where Just we're that. getting started. And the team basically said, well, I guess you're not trading UC Saros then. And <laughs> then they run off, what, eight straight wins? And it's obvious they're not making that trade. So it it definitely impacts a lot of things. Whether or not the commissioner's office is worried about it, I don't think so. They've got better things to worry about with, you know, officiating now front burner and Department of Player Safety continuing to be front burner and things like that. And that franchise that we shall never speak its right. name. There's that Remember, we yeah. made that rule last year that you don't speak about that team unless absolutely nothing is going on. Lastly, um, what do you think of the first time we've talked to you here in a while? Yeah. What do you make of this Canuck season? What do you think of their chances in the Stanley Cup playoffs? Well, I think if you want to go back to last year, and I'm certainly not taking any credit for anything that Rick Tockett and the coaching staff of the Vancouver Canucks have done. But I had a real good feeling um, when they hired talk that this was going to turn around, not to this degree, come on. I mean, um, but they've also gone through some adversity of late. So it's it's far been from a flawless season to this stage. But, you know, the players talk about the standard, and that's exactly what I thought talk it would bring. And that's why I think management made the call on Bruce Boudreaux when they made the call, because I think that paid dividends so that talk and company come in. He uh, establishes that standard and that culture that they knew was going to be there when they arrived uh, in training camp. So I'm I'm less surprised at the success of the team overall. Brilliant stuff. Uh, stuff. Great to hear your voice, your face. Thank yeah, you for this. Of. Get better. <laughs> no. And we'll be watching. Uh, we'll be watching yeah. with interest over the next 48 hours. Thanks. All right, guys. Good to check up again. Hey, everybody, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Sakaris and Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. They call it, the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.